Welcome to our video about smoking and oral health. If you're a smoker, you should consider quitting for your overall health. Not only does smoking contribute to tooth decay and gum recession, but it can also aggravate other oral problems. Among other things, smoking can delay healing after oral surgery, increase the chances of dental implant failure, and irritate salivary gland ducts. To make matters worse, it can cause a condition known as nicotine stomatitis, a condition caused by extreme heat in the mouth. This condition, known as a smoker's palate, is only curable by quitting smoking. Signs of Oral Cancer Oral cancer, or mouth cancer, develops on the surface of the tongue, lips, and gums. Other areas of the body can develop tumors, including the tonsils and salivary glands. The pharynx, the part of the throat that connects the mouth to the windpipe, can also be affected. Smoking is a known risk factor, but there are other factors that may increase the likelihood of getting mouth cancer. Cigarette smoke is a toxic substance that contains over 6,000 chemicals, at least 200 of which are known carcinogens. When inhaled, these chemicals penetrate the moist tissues of the mouth. They contain excess amounts of carbon monoxide and hydrogen cyanide. Most cases of oral cancer develop in the squamous cells of the mouth and throat. Exposure to smoke causes these cells to undergo genetic mutations and distorted DNA, which allows the cancerous cells to replicate uncontrollably. People who have already had cancer should be wary of smoking. Those who smoke are more likely to develop another type of oral cancer than those who have never had it. As tobacco is linked to lung and heart disease, it is also a risk factor for mouth cancer. The most common type of oral cancer is squamous cell carcinoma, or SCC. If you smoke, your chances of developing it are twice as high as for non-smokers. The good news is that oral cancer is highly treatable when detected early. By visiting your dentist at least twice a year, performing a monthly self-exam, and not smoking, you can greatly reduce the chances of getting the disease. Avoiding smoking is the best way to minimize your risk of developing oral cancer. Regular dental visits can help you detect symptoms earlier. And if you do have a condition, your doctor can give you the resources to help you. The age at diagnosis of oral cancer increases with age. The average age at diagnosis is 62, although many cases occur in people younger than 55. Tobacco and alcohol use are known risk factors, but not all mouth cancer is caused by smoking. There are many other risk factors associated with oral cancer. Fortunately, most cases can be prevented by avoiding them. You should also make sure that you are consuming plenty of water and avoiding tobacco and alcohol. If you suspect that you have oral cancer, consult a physician right away. Many people do not realize that tobacco and alcohol are linked, but these two products have been known to increase the risk of oral cancer by 50 to 60 percent. Smoking and alcohol are also linked with a higher risk of oral cancer than both of these substances individually. In addition to tobacco and alcohol, UV light and a diet low in fruits and vegetables increases the risk of oral cancer. Signs of Tooth Loss There are many signs of tooth loss associated with smoking. It leads to plaque buildup, tooth discoloration, and a reduced sense of taste. In addition, smoking increases the risk of gum disease and oral cancer. Even though not all of these problems are directly related to smoking, they can be avoided by taking good care of your teeth and gums. It is also recommended to schedule regular dental visits and quit smoking if possible. Toxins in tobacco products can damage the gums, which can lead to serious health problems. Smoking affects the supply of blood and oxygen to the gums, making them more vulnerable to infection. Furthermore, Tobacco can also hinder healing after tooth extraction, making the procedure much more painful. Besides causing pain, tobacco use also reduces the chance of successful dental implants. Additionally, smoking can lead to mouth cancer, a condition of the mouth. The bacteria responsible for this damage also destroy the bone and connective tissue that anchor teeth to the jaw. When the gums become infected, the teeth become loose and fall out. 
In severe cases, dentists will need to remove teeth to repair the affected area. Smokers have higher risk of tooth loss because their immune system is compromised. Thus, they are more likely to suffer from tooth loss as a result. So, stop smoking and start taking good care of your teeth today. A study from Japan has shown a link between drinking and smoking habits and tooth loss. The findings from the study were published in J. Periodontal Rees and J. Spencer and Roberts Thompson. Although the exact relationship between drinking and smoking has not yet been fully determined, the findings indicate a causal relationship between these two factors. Smokers have higher risks of tooth loss than non-smokers. Furthermore, former smokers have a lower risk of tooth loss than non-smokers. There is an association between smoking and tooth loss, but it is unclear how smoking affects the cause of tooth loss in postmenopausal women. However, the results of the Buffalo Osteoperio study, which included 1,106 postmenopausal women, indicate that smoking causes tooth loss more than just general tooth loss. Further, the study also examines whether smoking is associated with the development of caries and periodontal disease. In addition to contributing to tooth loss, smoking increases the risk of oral cancer. This cancer spreads rapidly and is often fatal if not detected early. Regular dental checkups can help prevent oral cancer, and early detection is crucial. In addition, smoking causes damage to the gum tissue, resulting in receding gums and exposed roots. These exposed roots are more susceptible to tooth decay, and the exposed nerve endings also increase the risk of hot-slash-cold sensitivity and, the smell of tobacco can be unpleasantly strong. Quitting smoking reduces risk of developing a host of health conditions. The benefits of quitting smoking are many. For example, quitting smoking significantly lowers the risk of cardiovascular disease and stroke. It also significantly reduces markers of inflammation and hypercoagulability. Moreover, smoking has also been linked to a host of respiratory conditions, including asthma and COPD. Lastly, quitting smoking improves the blood flow to the lungs and improves the appearance of skin and hair. The research also shows that former smokers reduced their risk of many chronic diseases, including heart disease, stroke, and cancer. This reduction was similar for smokers who had not been diagnosed with COPD. And the results of this study were consistent in both black and white former smokers. These differences are important, because they suggest that smoking causes a number of health problems in people. Moreover, exposure to secondhand smoke increases the risk of disease. The risks of pregnancy-related diseases are also greatly increased for women who smoke. Secondhand smoke is a risk factor for the development of lung cancer in women, and it has been linked to an increased risk of birth defects for both the mother and child. Smoking in pregnancy can also increase the risk of preterm labor, premature birth, and a host of other complications. A visit to your GP is highly recommended to get the advice of a health professional on quitting smoking. Another study shows that smokers' risk of pneumonia is decreased by about two-thirds compared to non-smokers. However, the association between ex-smokers and non-smokers is not statistically significant. Moreover, ex-smokers with COPD were at a higher risk of pneumonia than non-smokers without COPD. Despite all of the advantages of quitting smoking, relapses are common. During the first week of quitting, the symptoms of withdrawal are most intense. To minimize stress, try to use support groups and consider rewarding yourself for each milestone. Afterward, it's important to keep trying and celebrating your progress. Your health will greatly benefit from your efforts to quit. And don't forget to tell your loved ones that you've decided to stop smoking. Another study found that smoking is an important modifiable risk factor for dementia. Although it's not a universal risk factor, smoking has a higher incidence of dementia in those with Alzheimer's disease and vascular dementia than those who don't smoke. However, it's still important to avoid secondhand smoke, as secondhand smoke is also a risk factor. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.